How do you insert the igniter into a composite motor and keep it all together during launch? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Occasionally we get a customer that asks us how to put the igniter into their composite rocket motor. Now these are a little bit different from black powder motors, so I thought I'd take a little video and show you how it's done. Um, all of these are composite motors, but they all look a little bit different. We have a reloadable motor here. We have one of the Quest uh, composite motors with the ceramic nozzle, and then we have an Aerotech Econojet motor with the traditional plastic nozzle like this one here. But basically, they're all the same. Composite propellant is different from black powder in that one of the main reasons is you have to ignite them from the top. What does that mean to ignite it from the top? Well, this right here is the nozzle of the rocket motor on this end. And it's on this end here, too. It's not this end. Um, it's this end with the hole in it. And you can see this one here on, on this motor. Uh, we need to put the igniter all the way to the front end of the motor to ignite it. Um, let, me, let me take this one apart so you can actually see what's inside. Uh, but inside of these other ones is basically the same. So here is the nozzle. This is a reloadable, so you can take it apart. Um, and then inside of that is the propellant grain. And this grain is called a C slot uh, because it's, it's a slot and it makes the rest of the propellant look like a C shape like that. And the igniter will go through the nozzle and into that slot. And it has to go all the way through the slot and it's going to come out the front and it's actually going to touch the bulkhead or the delay at the very top of the motor like that so when it's when it's all assembled oh, why isn't it oh there's a, a washer that went sideways on me like that and then the igniter goes through the nozzle like that but uh, normally the igniter is going to be out of the motor like this um, now, inside of your motor, you can have like a C slot like I just showed you here. Sometimes the grain inside is just a circular hole, like a straw right down the middle. Regardless of which type you have, the igniter has to go through that core all the way to the top. Okay, so then, so here is um, an Aerotech igniter. I think these are called the First Fire Juniors. Um, and so we're going to stick it all the way in, and you'll feel it hit the top. And you can pull it out and kind of measure it. So, okay, so this one is definitely not all the way at the top because it's going to go up to about there. On some of these shorter motors, it's going to go about here, uh, but it goes in pretty deep. You don't want to feel like the wires um, is kinking on you. Okay, so that one went in much nicer there. So I can feel it, and it's not kinking, and I can feel it hitting the front end. So then when I pull it out, you can see how deep it inside it went. Okay, so now to secure this in the, the motor, um, on the reload motors, they come with this little plastic cap. And what I've gone ahead and done is taken a knife and just caught a slit down one side so that it opens up pretty easy. And then what you would do is you would bend the igniter over the side of the nozzle like that and then just put that cap on. And that kind of holds it in place so it doesn't fall out. Um, now on this end, you can see that the wire hasn't been stripped. So you'll have to strip that wire yourself. And it's pretty easy to do. You can just take a knife and just cut right down through the middle, separate the wires, and pull them apart. And then you need to strip off so you can see the bare wire on the inside. Um, you can take an egg knife and just kind of gently roll it around. And you will put a little slice on it. And then you can just pull it off. See, like that, I just pulled off the insulation. So again, you take the wire and you just roll it. So it's kind of just rolling it on. Don't press too hard. You don't want to cut through the wire. You just want to cut through the insulation. Okay, so now 
you would take that again, put it inside your motor, find that slot. Sometimes you have to go around in circles to find that slot, but you'll find it eventually. Make sure your igniter kind of straighten it out as straight as you can. Protect the head. This is the delicate end. So, you know, just kind of put your fingers right below the head and stretch it out. Make it nice and straight. And then slide it in. Find that slot. Once you find it, this one's going in hard. There we go. Slide it in. Again, you're going to bend the wires over, then kind of push them down along the side like that. Put the cap on. And then you're going to stick it in your rocket motor. And you can put the retainer on. And then when you're going to hook up your igniter clips, one to each one. And make sure that the metal the metal on this one or the you know the the bare wire doesn't touch that one. You don't want to make you don't want to short them out. Okay. So then when you when you put your clips on, the object is that the weight of the clips doesn't pull out the igniter because if it pulls it out, it's not going to ignite. It's got to stay all the way at the very top. If it if it kind of slides down a little bit like that, it's not going to ignite the motor. This igniter has to be absolutely must be at the very top. That's your your go by there. Okay, so let's let's do some of these other ones here. Now this is the um, the Yukano Jet. Uh, this one has a rubber band instead of a red cap. Um, they give you a rubber band like this, and that is to hold this on. Okay, and this one, um, this one, the wires are already pre-stripped. They're just kind of um, there's the insulation. It's kind of kind of pressed, a, you know, separated a little bit. Um, and then again, we want to separate them even further apart. So I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to run it right through the middle of the wires like this so I can separate them apart. And you know, you want to make them as wide as you can so that those clips don't touch each other. Okay, so then this one here, again, protect the head, straighten it out, and then we're going to stick it in. And this one, okay, it's all the way at the front. You can, it's going to go in about that far. So it doesn't go all the way to the bulkhead up here, but it's, there's a delay element right here in the middle. It's going to go in that deep. And then on this one here, you'll bend it over the side again, like this. Make like a U-shaped bend. Then you're going to take the rubber band and you're going to wrap it around like that. Okay, and then bend it down. And then again, you're going to attach your clips to it. Now. The rubber bands can sometimes be a little bit loose. You know, they cannot kind of overstretch. So on this particular rocket, um, it doesn't have a motor retainer on it, so I use tape. And tape works just fine. I always tell people that, but everybody likes their retainers, the screw-on retainers, which are nice. But in a pinch, you can always use tape. And I'm just using masking tape. Um, and then this will tape the motor in like this. I'm going to do it in several pieces. So now the igniter is still here and it's free to come out once we give a good tug on it. If you're using the tape method like I am, make sure you press down the tape really hard and then see kind of kind of fold it over that edge you know, and then that will lock that motor in, and the motor is not coming out. But the igniter, it can come out. So, again, hook up your leads and make sure that the weight of the leads doesn't pull the motor out or doesn't pull that igniter out. Just like that. Now, the rubber bands can be, like I said, they can be a little iffy. Um, so, but in a pinch, you can always take masking tape like this, just take a small piece. Um, say that rubber band wasn't there, you lost your rubber band or you lost your red cap, don't panic. You can just always use masking tape. Just take a small piece like this. Uh, what I like to do is to press it on my forehead to pick up a little bit of oil from my skin. <laughs> do I look like a cyclops? <laughs> um, and then just tape it down against the motor like this. 
Um, and the purpose of, of putting it against your skin is so that it will release easily when the rocket takes off. Um, I also like to take my wires like this right here. Um, start with the wire at the, uh, the, the clip at the end of the wire and then wrap around like this. And this gives you extra surface area for the metal to contact and it also makes it really hard to pull off. Um, so then when the, when the rocket takes off, it's going to pull everything out. And see how nice that pulled away from the tape? Uh, what you don't want to do is to pull the igniters up into the air because then now you're dragging all this wire. And eventually it's going to yank out, but it could yank out with the rocket going sideways. So you always want to uh, you know, make sure that the tape is good enough to keep it from falling out, but easy enough to release. Okay, and then finally, I want to show you, um, this is the Quest Q-Jet motor, also made by Aerotech. And these have a ceramic nozzle, but again, it's the same thing on the inside. There's a core in the middle that the igniter has to go into. So you can see how deep that went in. It goes in that deep. Okay, and then how do you hold this one in? Well, this one time they give you this little plastic tube. And it's kind of spongy. It feels kind of like uh, heat shrink tubing. But what you do is you just shove it in next to the igniter like this. And that um, is, you know, will, will be enough to hold it in. And then when it fires, it'll pop right out just like that. Okay, so that was three different composite motors, three different ways to hold the igniter in. And I think I've given you enough information. Remember, always keep the igniter all the way at the very top because it, even if it slides down a quarter of an inch, it's probably not going to ignite the motor. So that's the most critical thing. Um, and then make sure it's in there securely enough so that the weight of your clips don't, doesn't pull it out or doesn't you know, make it sag on you. So that's, uh, that's how to put in igniters. My name is Tim Van Milligan. Uh, you're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified when we have new videos, hit the subscribe button and then also the little notification bell once you hit the subscribe button. And this will allow YouTube to send you a notification when we have a new video available. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.